Hi, welcome to How to Repair. In this video I'm going to show you a common fault that occurs on all tumble dryers, but especially on this Beko tumble dryer. If you hear a distinctive humming noise and the machine will not start, there is a high chance that the capacitor may have gone. I will show you how to check the capacitor and replace it, and also show you other faults that can occur when your Beko tumble dryer is not turning. When we start the tumble dryer, you will hear a distinctive humming noise. This humming noise is coming from the motor. This is a good sign that the capacitor has gone. The first thing you need to do before touching the machine is unplug it from the electricity supply. There are three screws on the lid which hold it in place. Just take these three screws out. The lid will then come up, back, and with a jiggle it will come off. As you can see, with the lid off, the belt is intact on the machine. The drum is easy to turn. This is a good sign, there's no problem with the motor, there's no problem with the belt. What we need to do now is ascertain whether it's the capacitor. Now the easy way to do this is to actually plug the machine back into the power supply and then carefully, when you press the start button, push the drum. So I've connected the machine back to the power supply. I'm going to press start. You can hear it humming. But if I give the drum a push, the drum starts to turn. When the machine goes into the counterclockwise rotation, the drum would then stop again and hum. So I'll just simulate this again for you. When I press the start button, you're hearing the humming noise. But with the palm of your hand, if you push the drum, it starts. This is a very good sign that the capacitor is gone. Next, we need to get to the motor access on the rear of the machine. Disconnect the machine from the electricity supply. So, to access the motor cover, we need to remove the heater plate at the back here and also the inspection cover on the right hand side. Once you've removed all the screws from the back plate, just ease it away. Sometimes you will need to put a screwdriver just down the side because sometimes the seal sticks to the back of the machine. This now gives us access to the inside of the machine to a screw that's usually hidden inside because we can remove all these screws but we also have to remove a screw on the inside. So here we have the access airflow and just down inside here you can see the screw. So removing the screw from the inside, this comes away and that's where the screw lives that locks it onto the front vent tube. The capacitor lives just underneath the motor. Now, to get access to the capacitor, we need to remove a nut on the back of the capacitor. Whenever handling a machine that's unplugged, make sure you do not touch the terminals on the capacitor, because the capacitor can hold a charge. So just undoing the nut, and there's a washer we are able to move the capacitor out of the way. Now, as you can see, the capacitor has a line running through the middle, and there's two sides. With an insulated pair of pliers or screwdriver, just short across the two terminals. This makes sure the capacitor is fully discharged. discharged. Then remove the two terminals, on the capacitor you can actually see that it states it's a 10 UF, 10 microfarad. That is the size of the capacitor and we need to replace this. Whether you're buying a genuine capacitor 
from the manufacturer or you're buying a pattern part on some capacitors you will have four terminals but there is a line down the middle some capacitors may be made out of a plastic shell also having a line down the middle and some capacitors may have four terminals with a line down the middle this is the inside of the capacitor and this is the outside of the capacitor do nev never put the wires both on the same side otherwise the you will not get the shunt from the capacitor which is needed to turn the motor over so do make sure you wire your capacitors correctly so I've got a replacement capacitor here which is 10 UF the same as the old and I'm putting one wire on the one side and one wire on the other side now I'll slip it back into its location put the nut and the washer back on just take it up holding the capacitor for a quarter of a turn and now we're ready to reassemble the machine and test it so quickly reassemble this remembering to put the screw on the inside Once you've done the motor inspection hatch, you need to replace the back cover. Now with the capacitor replaced, I'm leaving the lid off so you can actually see the drum turning. When we press the start now, the drum starts straight away and there you go thank you very much indeed for watching this video please remember if you do want to fully service your uh, Bico tumble dryer there is another video in the link above and if you do need parts for this appliance please make sure you check the UF rating of the capacitor it is very important to replace the capacitor with the correct size I have put a link below which will take you through to all tumble dryer capacitors and if you have any questions please remember to contact us at the website thanks very much indeed for watching